The rumors were true. Single car qualifying is returning to NASCAR in a big and bold way. Let's talk about that and a lot more. How's it going, you guys? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Got a couple things to talk about. The biggest news story, though, is one we already kind of covered a couple weeks ago, because if I do say so myself, uh, the show was slightly ahead of some of this news. A couple weeks ago, when the rumors first started circulating, we talked about how NASCAR was planning to bring single car qualifying back. We'll talk more about that and go in detail as to the actual changes they're making. We'll get to that in just a second, but to start, uh, I got a couple other smaller news stories I just want to touch on. Firstly, Truck Series driver Austin Wayne Self has been reinstated after completing the uh, Road to Recovery program. He was suspended earlier this year for failing a drug test apparently, but he's only missed maybe a month. Uh, it sounds like he's going to be back in the truck this week in the number 22 truck at Dover. Uh, so good to see him back in the car, or back in the seat at least. Uh, we Again, no real details. We don't know what the substance was. We don't know anything more, more than that, but uh, I guess good to see him get back and it was quick. So, nice. Another driver with some good news, Tyler Reddick is going to be driving the number 31 car for RCR in a couple weeks when we go to Kansas. It'll be his second career Cup Series start. He made his debut at Daytona just a few months back, uh, and now making a second start at a mile and a half this time. Reddick is currently the points leader in the Xfinity Series. He won the most recent race at Talladega. He's obviously de the defending uh, Xfinity Series champion. Uh, so yeah, getting his second chance in a cup car, and he's going to go to a place that's a little more challenging, perhaps, than Daytona is. RCR's got a lot of youngins driving for him. Austin Dillon's only, like, in his, what, sixth year, and he's their veteran now. They got a rookie in Hemrick, now they got Reddick making some starts here and there. RCR is a very young team, but they got a lot, they got a potentially a bright future ahead of them, uh, so excited to see what Reddick can do. Another random bit of news, you might have missed it, but uh, defending Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion Joey Logano uh, was at the White House earlier this week to visit with the president. Roger Penske was also in attendance. They met with President Trump, uh, spoke to the media. Uh, it was just, you know, a typical White House visit. Nothing too notable there. I just think it's cool that NASCAR is still getting that kind of national recognition. I feel like a lot of times with all the negativity around the sport, saying how it's dying, how it's not relevant anymore, I mean, it's still nice to see these gestures, know that NASCAR is still... It's still the biggest, by far, the biggest motorsport in America, so it's not like NASCAR has dropped off the map. Logano gave Trump one of his old helmets from last year. He also gave him a replica, a mini replica of the Monster Energy Cup Series trophy, which I gotta say, apparently uh, Evan Pasoko, who is a commentator for the iRacing Series, replied to me on Twitter and let me know that they actually give those little trophies out to, I guess, the crew members? Uh, you know, the winning, the, I guess the 22 team crew members got those? I want one of those. That looks awesome. I'd love to put a little Monster Energy Trophy on my desk. Anyway, not a whole lot of extra news there, but nice to see, you know, national recognition for uh, NASCAR and its current champion. With that all out of the way, let's talk about the big news that broke yesterday. Uh, it was confirmed yesterday that NASCAR is going back to the old style, the traditional single car qualifying starting this very weekend at Dover. At every single oval racetrack through the end of this season, we will see single car qualifying. The road courses will still have a form of group qualifying, uh, but every oval, big and small, is going to have single car qualifying. Here's the nitty gritty details. At all tracks greater than one and a quarter mile in length, uh, drivers will only make one lap, and that'll be their only chance to set a time. At tracks uh, less than one and a quarter mile in length, uh, cars will get to make two laps in a row, and the fastest of those two laps will be their official time. One round only, you get one opportunity, no knockout rounds or anything. And this is how it's going to be for the Cup, Xfinity, and Truck Series. For the Cup Series side, this makes sense. I mean, they're the ones with that new aero package where drafting comes into play, but for Xfinity and Trucks, aero package really hasn't been an issue. Group qualifying's worked fine for them, so I think it's a little interesting that Na uh, NASCAR has opted uh, to just make everything single car. It sounds, from the sounds of it, some of their quotes, they just want to make it as simple as possible for fans to understand, uh, and that's basically was their mindset. Which is fine by me, I've been vocal. I liked group qualifying uh, for the most part. Of course, with this year, I didn't like it with the way this package worked. What we've seen this year in group qualifying wasn't good, so I understood that NASCAR really had only one option here to go back to single car qualifying. Uh, in the future, if the Gen 7, hopefully the Gen 7 is uh, less reliant on the draft as these current cars are. Uh, I'd like NASCAR to maybe adopt a form of group qualifying again at some tracks, uh, but we'll see where it goes. Sounds like for the foreseeable future, however, NASCAR is sticking with single car, and uh, it sounds like a lot of fans are happy about it. Let's go. There's still some more details I want to cover. According to reports, they still plan on fitting qualifying into that one-hour TV block, uh, and they're planning on featuring three different two-minute stretches where they will pause qualifying to allow TV to cut to commercials. This way, uh, we don't. the broadcast doesn't miss any anybody's run. 
Not sure if they're gonna be able to stick to this, but if they can, I think that's a really cool thing. That is one of the pros of single card qualifying is every team, big and small, gets their own dedicated minute or minute and a half of screen time. And the problem is, is in the past, a lot of small teams, they typically still cut to commercial breaks, so they didn't get as much exposure. Uh, but with this, thing in place it sounds like they're trying to move com commercials around so that they don't miss very many people's laps which is good for the small team so if they can stick by this uh, I think that's a good thing now since it's single car qualifying cars are going to go out one at a time how are they going to determine the qualifying order in the past we've seen it set by like practice speeds and stuff like that uh, but no NASCAR is going simple for this uh, as well the top 20 qualifiers in the previous race will automatically be the last 20 drivers to go out and make a run in the next race now those 20 drivers will have their specific order drawn completely at random now the slower drivers from the previous week will then be the first ones to go out the next week and their order as well will be drawn at random. So in other words, if you qualify poorly uh, one, one week, you're likely going to be one of the first ones to go out uh, the next week. Whereas if you qualify great one race, that one race, uh, the next race, you're likely going to be one of the last people to go out. Now, typically uh, in the past, you've wanted to be the later, you wanted to go out later in a run uh, because at that point, other cars have been able to lay down, you know, rubber and typically the track has more grip. Not always the case. Sometimes you might catch a cloud at the right time and add some grip somewhere. Uh, but more often than not, you want to be, uh, you want to be someone who goes out later. So this is NASCAR's way of rewarding people who do well the week before, they get the better draw the next week. But it's still mostly random. And again, this is reportedly going to be the same for Xfinity Cup and Trucks. Whew, I know, a lot of information. Hopefully I did an okay job of explaining it. It's kind of confusing, but I think when we start to see it in action after one or two races, it'll make a lot of sense. I want to spend the last bit of this episode, though, uh, reading some of you guys' responses. I posted a poll on Twitter, which you can follow me, at EricEastup17. I posted this poll asking you guys, are you happy that NASCAR is switching to single car runs? And as you can see, pretty overwhelmingly positive responses from you guys, on Twitter at least. More than 500 votes, 83% of you guys said you are happy about this move. Uh, I want to read a few of the comments because a few of you guys tweeted replies at me that I think uh, are, are worth reading. Matt says, with this format, yes. However, when drafting means less for setting quick times, I'd love to have group qualifying back. That's kind of where I'm at as well. I mean, single car qualifying, I don't hate it. I just, with this package, at mile and a half, single car qualifying is going to be boring. It's going to be like watching restrictor plate or, you know, past super speedway race qualifying where they just hit the gas and turn left. And that's, you know, the times aren't going to be that different and it's all going to be the car, not at all really the driver. So that's why I'm not super big fan of single car with this package either. Uh, I just think this package in general is not fun when the cars are out there by themselves. Brendan says, yes, it may work uh, with other sports, but the way NASCAR seems to want to head, it won't work without making a mockery of the sport. Single car qualifying in the past has brought its fair share of great memorable moments. Guys, don't forget that. Yes, single car qualifying has had its moments. I would say group qualifying has also had its moments. I remember just a few weeks ago, group qualifying led to a fight breaking out during qualifying between Michael McDowell and Daniel Suarez. I mean, that's kind of fun. That's entertaining. I'm just not going to lie. But I agree, the bad press that's come with a few of the more recent qualifying sessions, like at, a, at Auto Club or at Texas, or, you know, I feel like that bad press is definitely not a good image for the sport. So I understand why they're changing it for this package, for sure. Anthony says, I hope everyone is happy. I think this is the biggest mistake ever, and I won't even watch qualifying from now on. This is so stupid. Wow. Okay, coming on a little bit strong there, uh, but, you know, like I said, NASCAR fans are always split on everything. You're never going to please everyone. Harmony says they got the right solution, but I feel that they overdid it with every single oval. It's still an overall positive. And I kind of agree with this, too. I am surprised that they opted to go to single car qualifying on, like, short tracks, where the draft doesn't come into play. It sounds to me like NASCAR just wanted to simplify everything and just say we're going to do it the same at every single track, except a couple of road courses, and fans are going to be able to easily understand it, easily follow it, and that's just how it's going to be. That's why they did it for Cup, Xfinity, and Truck, and that's why they're doing it across all different ovals. So uh, it sounds like that's just where NASCAR's head's at. You know, Jim Francis said since he's been in power now, getting back to basics. This is about as basic as it gets. Sam says, yeah, but I didn't watch qualifying before and single cars definitely not bringing more excitement. Yeah, this is the one that's kind of tricky because I've heard some people say that qualifying doesn't need to be entertaining and I don't really agree with that statement. Qualifying doesn't have to be like edge of your seat action. It never really has been. Uh, but with single car qualifying with this package, especially at intermediate tracks, I think short tracks will still be kind of entertaining. But intermediate tracks, it's not going to be fun. Uh, I'll still watch sometimes if I, ha if I have nothing else to do. Uh, but I'm not going to be as excited by it as maybe I was in the past. In the past, I'd watch to see how people would progress through the rounds, who do the best at saving their tires. Now it's like... I don't know, I can feel like I can just look it up later and see the times and I basically know what happened because, I, I don't know, nothing super exciting is going to happen during qualifying with single car. At least not at the intermediates, I'm pretty sure. Matt says, I just go with the flow. I'm happy 82% are happy. Yeah, I guess that's where I'm at. Sounds like the majority of the fans wanted single car back because of the mess that uh, this package has turned group qualifying into. Uh, so as long as 
the majority of fans are happy. I guess I'm happy. I don't have a strong preference here. Really no other way to say it. So uh, yeah, those are some of you guys' responses. Sounds like most people uh, definitely are in favor of this, but let me know down in the comments. Are you one of those people who's really against this idea? Did you still like the chaos of group qualifying? Did you want something else, uh, perhaps? Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think, and uh, yeah, I look forward to reading them. That's gonna do it for this episode. A little shorter than some of my recent episodes. I've been going long lately, so uh, this is kind of like a bite-sized version from what I've been doing recently. Uh, but thanks everyone for watching. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Continue the conversation over there. Uh, of course, remember, you can check out down my description and get yourself an Out of the Groove t-shirt, support the show, represent the show. I appreciate y'all checking that out. And then, of course, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Shout out Michael Harrison, at Jeebus of the Stars, SelfishGifts.com, Mentally Defective, Cameron James, John Koblenz, Jason R. Long, Wesley Donaldson, Isaac Dennison, Nika Suzuki, iFantasyRace.com, Ross Corlett, TheRacingInsiders.com. I'm getting really good at shouting you guys out. <laughs> uh, and the rest of these amazing Patreon supporters, thank you so, so much for the continued support. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you also want to support the show, uh, you can check out that top link down in the description. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, supporting my dream. I really love making these videos, guys. I love watching and talking about NASCAR, uh, and I'm excited to keep doing it for uh, as long as I possibly can. Thank you all so much, as always, for the support. I'll be back probably not until after the Dover race on Sunday, but I'll see you guys then. Hope you have a great weekend. Hope the race is fun, and I'll see you afterwards. Thanks for watching, everybody.